Hello and welcome to Dr. Mildred Faye Jefferson's Vital Concerns. I'm Connie Murphy and we are very happy to welcome two priests from the Deaf Apostolate of the Archdiocese of Boston, Father Sean Carey, who is the Assistant Director of the Deaf Apostolate, and he is also parochial vicar, vicar of St. John the Evangelist Parish in Hopkinton, and interpreting for us today is Father Jeremy St. Martin. Welcome, Father. Thank you for having me here. We have a lot of uh, questions about the recent World Youth Day. Why did the deaf community attend, and can you tell me who attended? The deaf uh, <coughs> community went to World Youth Day because we were trying to support each other in the Catholic faith. We wanted to give our deaf great access to the to act Catholic faith through World Youth Day. Mm -hmm. And we also wanted to give them an opportunity to meet other deaf Catholics in the international community to share their faith with them. We had about 26 people in our group, wow. 13 kids and 13 young adults all together. It was an awesome group. There were sev several members of our group who had um, various kinds of uh, weaknesses, like one person was blind, one person had Usher syndrome, um, one person had autism, one person had cerebral mm -hmm. palsy, and uh, there was one person who had spinal bifida. Also, there was another person with a pacemaker. So, and all of them were also deaf, but it was an awesome group. I imagine you uh, had a uh, lot of medical uh, people with you to, to assist, is that right? Actually, no, we didn't have medical people with us, but we had some um, parent leaders who were responsible if their son or daughter had a special medical need. Mm -hmm. But we also had professional interpreters with us who were outstanding. They were actually trilingual interpreters who knew Spanish, English, and American Sign Language. Um, this recent World Youth Day was in Madrid, in Spain, so some of the um, content of the events was in Spanish, so they could translate directly from Spanish into ASL. It was awesome. What were the challenges experienced uh, during World Youth Day and how were they overcome? There were many, many challenges that week, especially because of the, the weather. It was very hot. It was very easy to become di dehydrated. That was my number one concern as a leader. When we had group meet meetings, I was... Uh, telling them you've got to bring a lot of bottles of water with you, um, and soda is not water, coffee is not water. Mm -hmm. I was telling them that they needed to be ready to persevere and not give up, and they really listened, and they learned a lot. Another challenge was walking. We had to walk through these very crowded areas. Sometimes we were stuck in the crowd, and we had our hands on each other's shoulders in a long line trying to get through a very crowded place. Uh, but we had this big banner, a very, a, an awesome banner, and it had the logo for the Archdiocese of Boston and the logo for Sacred Heart Parish in Newton where the deaf go in, in Newton mm -hmm. for the Archdiocese of Boston. And also on the back of the banner we had this giant I love you hand shape. Mm -hmm. And so it helped people not get lost and it also attracted many people in the crowd to come up to us and um, express the uh, I love you handshake to us to say I love you. It was great. Each member of the group has had their own uh, special weaknesses sometimes, physical weaknesses. 
but we had some people stand up in front of the group and explain their specific physical limitations so that other members of the group would be av available to help. And one person, for example, stood up and explained what Usher syndrome was and expanded upon that so we could all learn about it. And then later when we were walking, we were better able to help that person by lending that person a shoulder so that they could be guided through the crowd. And the other thing we learned is that deaf people can really lead blind people. Each person in the group had weaknesses, but the weaknesses became their strengths. It was sort of like our um, weaknesses, when they're offered up to the Lord, um, they become a strength that he gives us. How did the experience benefit the deaf at World Youth Day? That's a great question. Because of their learning experiences and, and coming to learn about each other's weaknesses, they all were people who experienced what it meant to be the body of Christ, the one body of Christ, and how how much strength there is in that, how much mutual respect and love and support there is in, a, mm -hmm. in an experience of the body of Christ. For that full week, we um, figured that there were some events we couldn't go to, but there were our real goal was to make sure we got to the last Mass with Pope Benedict, and that Mass was really World Youth Day itself, mm. and that was our goal we kept in sight. So for, for the full week, we were, everything was geared up to um, that day. So we were practicing walking, supporting each other, because that last walk would be a great challenge, full of awful, crowded situations, um, um, it's a situation in which you could easily become dehydrated, but we were lucky. We had a good plan set up to achieve that goal, and when we arrived near that field and we got off the, at the train station, we decided at that train station that we were going to split into two groups. One group could walk and another group could take a bus and we mm -hmm. would meet at the field. So we agreed to do that and we split into two groups. Mm -hmm. But when we arrived at the field, it was amazing. As we were walking through these vast crowds, we saw fire trucks coming with water cannons shooting water up into the air, and all the people were yelling out for water, give them, spray the water over here. Some people were holding bottles, trying yeah. to get the water from the fire truck to fill their <laughs> bottles. We were looking at our group, and we were scared. And I saw... Uh, stretchers going by us in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking to myself, I hope my group doesn't have members who pass out or something or get heat strokes. So we're trying to get through the crowd. And finally, we arrived at our area. And the other group that took the bus, they also arrived at the field and went in. And they had a hard time going through the crowd, very hard time. They almost gave up. But God's grace is, is amazing. There was a nun who showed up. Her name was Sister Olga. She saw us. They, she saw that part of the group, and she said, "Do you need help?" And we, we were kind of. It was. We said, it's, "We're desperate here. It's very hard to get through, and we have some people with physical weaknesses." So she gave mm -hmm. us two wheelchairs, and for two of the members of our group, a blind person and another person who was um, having some of a physical limitations. But the, the challenges were that the, uh, the it was hard to push the um, wheelchairs through the sand. Father Jeremy was pushing, uh, but the group didn't give up. And we, um, the other group had already arrived and was looking for them and waiting for them. But then when we saw the other group mm -hmm. coming, we were very excited. And our group became one again, and we were thrilled and we all really got to love each other as brothers and sisters. So that was a benefit. Mm -hmm. Learning to become one strong body of Christ, that, that's really what was uh, the benefit. Speaking of the, uh, Pope Benedict XVI, what were some of the messages imparted on the deaf from World Youth Day? And especially, uh, can you tell us some of the messages from His Holiness? One of the, the most important 
message that really impacted us. Is when the Pope said, <coughs> your faith is something that is a gift from God. It's a gift that you cannot see, and it is a gift that isn't a result of your own effort. It's a gift that comes to you through other generations that you need to share with the next generation. That was a great me message because many youth don't understand faith today. They think that faith must be something uh, tangible that you can see, that they think maybe it's about proof, but it's not about proof. That was a great message for our kids to understand better um, about the gift of faith. Another message that was really impactful was um, as the Pope Be Benedict the Sixteenth look around, looked around at all the youth in Madrid, all five different continents there, two million people, and the Pope was sitting there looking around at all these youth, and he said, you youth are all here because because you're here to, to show your faith, because you're here because you mm -hmm. want the truth. You're looking for the truth. That was a powerful message. It was a great experience for the youth to gather together. We met so many deaf Catholics from other countries. It was awesome. Even though they're, they had different sign languages, we had the opportunity to learn each other's sign languages, and that was awesome. And also, one important thing is, is that the, the, youth, the deaf youth were able to share their faith with other deaf youth. Would you go back to a future youth, a World Youth Day? Well, from our group, um, all the unanimous response from our entire group was, yes, we want to go again. <laughs> At the beginning, it was tough. They were kind of thinking, what is this? Mm -hmm. But we had to emphasize to them it wasn't a vacation, and that, but that it was a pilgrimage. And they learned a lot through the challenges of a pilgrimage, but it was a great benefit for them for that week. The next one is in Rio de Janeiro, and that's in the year 2013. Let's uh, talk about some uh, efforts by uh, governments and uh, others to uh, abort uh, and uh, activate so-called physician-assisted suicide, especially as it impacts the disabled, including uh, the deaf. I'm very disappointed to learn about those, those recent efforts, and it makes me think, what's wrong with the world? What, what are they, mm -hmm. What's their problem? They want all the people of the world to become perfect people? They're missing a lot. They're missing the gift. And welcome to this week's edition of Dr. Mildred Faye Jefferson's Vital Concerns. With me today are two very wonderful people from the Archdiocese of Boston's Office of the Deaf Apostolate, Father Jeremy St. Martin, and our interpreter today, Celia Mohiga. Welcome, both of you. Before thank we, you, thank you. Before we uh, begin, uh, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about yourself, Father? My name is Father Jeremy St. Martin. 
and my sign name is Father Jeremy. I'm a priest for the Archdiocese of Boston. I was ordained in 2002. I grew up in Fall River, Massachusetts. When I was four, my family moved to Rhode Island, and we lived there. My first assignment as a priest was at St. Cecilia's Parish in Ashland, Massachusetts. And now, for the past four years, I'm a priest. I've been the priest for the deaf here at the Archdiocese of Boston. Well, Celia, why don't you join in and tell us something about yourself? Uh, my name is Celia Mojica. Um, I'm a Northeastern University graduate from their ASL English interpreting program. I graduated in 2009. In the fall of 2009, I started working for the Archdiocese of Boston as a staff interpreter coordinator for the Deaf Apostolate. Great. Okay, Father, uh, I know that there is um, sign language used uh, for various masses in the Archdiocese. What about other activities for the Deaf? We have many events for the deaf and with the deaf. There's a deaf man in the community named Bruce Bucci, and he helps us a great deal with the deaf religious education program. And Father Sean Carey, himself a deaf priest here in the Archdiocese, is also a teacher for the confirmation program for the deaf. And there's a wonderful woman who also works with us named Mary Brooks, and she runs the Senior Deaf Wellness Program. The, it's the first Tuesday of the month that program meets. We also have a World Youth Day group preparing to attend the World Youth Day this August in Madrid, Spain. And we're also involved with visiting families in their homes um, who perhaps have new children who are, are deaf. We also serve those in the hospitals who are deaf and need assistance or care. And we have outreach programs where we visit various parishes and celebrate, and celebrate masses. And we also have interpreters um, working with us developing um, our needs in that sense. We also have a deaf adult religious education program every Monday evening. So you help uh, people of all ages? Yes, yes we do. About how many people are going to Madrid to World Youth Day from Boston? Our group consists of about 28 individuals now. We have two professional trilingual interpreters working with us. They are proficient in English, Spanish, and American Sign Language. And the youth are very excited. Some of the youth in also included in our group are young adult leaders from various parishes. Some, we have three women from Canada who are actually joining our group, three deaf women, and they have already been to World Youth Day and will, very good Catholic women, deaf, um, and they will be great mm -hmm. leaders for our young people. And we have a few um, deaf people from California um, and as well as Boston, so we're really looking forward to that. And there's one young deaf man who is actually becoming blind. He has Usher's syndrome. So he's losing his vision. And he's really looking forward to being involved in, the, in that group. Really good young man. I have a couple of questions about uh, interpreting. Uh, how, how do you learn to be able to uh, use sign language? Is it, is it hard? 
Yeah, it's, 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 it's like learning any language, uh, French, German, Spanish. It's, it's just as learning any second language. It's a full language itself um, with a complete grammar uh, and different ways of expressing itself. It's a very unique language. The diocese actually sent me to Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C., which is the deaf university. I went to suit two summer programs there, and I studied at the Learning Center for the Deaf in Framingham. I took evening classes there. And I had uh, two deaf Catholic women tutor me every Friday to help me learn as well. And then in addition to all of that, uh, Father Sean Carey was a great teacher and taught me many, many things and helped me to um, master my interpreting skills as well. Do you uh, have to be a Catholic to interpret the Mass? No, no, not at all. You don't need to be Catholic. But it can help. I know very good interpreters who are highly skilled, and they know the Catholic vocabulary and Catholic understanding and concepts. There's one woman named Neva. She's actually Jewish, but she's a phenomenal Catholic interpreter. It's very like, consider it similar to a musician in that they don't need to be Catholic to be able to express good music for a particular mass. Naturally, there are some ways in that being Catholic might help. And there are some jobs where you may want an interpreter to have that same Catholic faith, but it's by no means required. As a member of the Knights of Columbus, Father, I noticed that you're wearing the emblem of a chaplain. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes. It's, this is the jewel for, to show that I'm a chaplain for the Knights of Columbus. I'm, I remember even before I became a priest, I was involved as a member of the Knights of Columbus in Roxbury. It was council number one, two, three I was involved in. And they were a great encouraging and supportive community as I was discerning my call to the priesthood. And they truly helped me. Um, and as a group, we were able to help those in our community who were poor or perhaps needed um, other assistance. And later mm -hmm. on, during my first assignment in Ashland, again, the Knights of Columbus were present in that community, and they were such a tremendous help to me as a young priest. And then yet again, as I'm working with the deaf community, The Crozier Council in Newton has been such um, an amazing support system. A man there, um, Father Sean Carey, is a member of that council as well. And soon we will be welcoming two new uh, members, both of them young Catholic fathers. Both of them are deaf, and they will become uh, members of our council. The council's very excited. It's such a beautiful um, and deaf-friendly council, and we're, we're very excited for, for that new Great. addition. Now, um, can you tell us a bit about the uh, deaf community and their involvement in the pro-life uh, movement, especially in the archdiocese? Yes, it's, it's very exciting, actually. Recently, 
many of our young people went to the Cathedral of the Holy Cross in Boston, where we had the annual March for Life happening. We had a special mass at the cathedral, and many of the young deaf in attendance joined all of the youth from Boston for this beautiful mass at the cathedral. And we made these great signs to hold as we marched through the streets of Boston to show our want to protect the, the innocent lives, those who are vulnerable, those who are unborn, and help the mothers who perhaps might find themselves in a crisis situation, and the fathers as well. The young deaf, and deaf in general, know a great deal about eugenics. And this is because the, the deaf community in America has a, has a history with eugenics. There was a eugenics law set up early in the 19, 1900s, saying that it was illegal for deaf people to marry. Mm. Um, it was clearly not a fair law. Anyways, it really hurt um, the deaf community. And in the Catholic Church, in canon law, The church states that deaf people can marry, they can share those promises of marriage through the expression using sign language. And that is not new for canon law. There was a Council of Orange that happened in France long ago and it was put in canon law at that time that deaf people could marry using sign language making their promises. I'd like to remind you that you can call Massachusetts Citizens for Life at 617-242-4199. 617-242-4199 if you have any questions questions, but uh, we would also ask uh, Father if uh, he could give us a telephone number and maybe a website for the Archdiocese of Boston, uh, so any person, they don't have to be deaf, but deaf as well as people with hearing might uh, get more information, especially about the deaf apostolate. <laughs> I have a number for text messaging. If a deaf person would like to text me, you can do that. It is a 617 number, 997 8025. 8025. Again, it's 617 997 8025. And you can always check www.deafdeafcatholic.org. That's deafcatholic.org. If you were to visit that website, you'll see on the left side a link to our calendar where you will find information about the masses we offer in ASL where deaf, the deaf will have access direct access, that is. And there is always a Sunday Mass at Sacred Heart in Newton at 10.30 every Sunday, celebrated entirely in ASL with a voice interpreter. So it's interpreted into English. And we have deaf people serving during that Mass and deaf people reading so it's really a, 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 it's a good one. <laughs> if, a, if a pastor of a, uh, any church 
would like you to uh, say Mass at the church and have it interpreted for the deaf in the community, what's the best way for them to arrange that? The best thing to do is have Father Sean, who is a new priest for the Archdiocese. He was born deaf, and he's truly a wonderful man. And he's a terrific role model for other deaf people. And he's a great way to show all people in the church that the church loves all people from whatever culture and whatever language background. A non-deaf person seeing a deaf person proclaim the gospel in sign language for the first time is really a, a great moment. So it's, it's a good idea to email Father Sean Carey about that. And you can find his email address at the website. And it's also fr Sean S-H-A-W-N, at deafcatholic.org. And you can email him directly. And once a month now, we have time for outreach masses such as that. And those are happening regularly. Some pastors might have deaf people in their parish and a pastor trying to help them might ask Father Sean to come and celebrate Mass or interpret. And it's, it's really a great um, experience for parents of deaf children. There are many times when in a given situation people might not be quite sure what to do and it's, it's really a great opportunity to have Father Sean present and visit a situation and a family is able to see what a great success, um, a, a successful deaf person, and realize that their, their children have, a, have a, a bright future ahead. Most people have heard about the telephone system TDY, but in addition, there is a service where a deaf person would be able to converse uh, with somebody on the other line with the help of an interpreter. Want to tell us a bit about that? Yes, yes. Long ago, long ago, many deaf people used TTYs. I believe you said TDY, but it's yeah. TTY. Yeah. And that was good at the time, but now more and more deaf people are able to use text messaging. But what is uh, very important for the deaf community, what you're speaking about, is a, a video phone shortened to VP. And it allows deaf people through a video service to directly communicate with each other or anyone who knows sign language. And if a deaf person wanted to converse with someone who did not know sign language, there's a service that they would call and it would connect them to an interpreter which would allow them to call a hearing individual. So it's a, a relay service for interpreting. So they would be able to have a conversation, much like we are, um, remotely. So if you ever answer a phone call and hear someone say, hello, I'm interpreter number one, two, three, don't hang up. Mm. Some people hear that and misunderstand it. They might perhaps think it's a company trying to sell them something and they hang up right away, but really what it is is a deaf person trying to call you. And it's the interpreter stating that it's an interpreted conversation. So just be patient until you become used to the experience and it's quite successful actually. We have a few minutes uh, left in the program 
and uh, maybe you would uh, want to talk about something that we haven't approached. Uh, so do you have any anything you'd like to uh, say? Yes, I grew up in a very pro-life family. Um, my parents were, were quite focused on that if issue. We would try to help women in situations before they enter, as they approached um, a clinic every Sunday, every Saturday rather, my family would go and try to counsel women who were making this decision. My parents were never mean or rude to these women. And some women were happy to see this last minute um, source of help. Some women didn't actually want to go through with it and they were desperate for, for help. And they were interested in the options that were available and my parents were able to help them. And it was really a beautiful thing to, to be involved in and to witness. And my parents were always very caring to people in general. They were such a great model. My father used to teach in a public school for seriously mentally and physically handicapped children. And he was clearly did not become rich. And the school system from this work and the school system that he worked in was a very poor, poor system. And at times on the weekends, we would actually, wanting to give the parents of these, ch these children a, a break of some kind, we would take care of these children. It was really a beautiful experience. I know that some people say, oh, pro-life people are always focused on that one issue of abortion, but really, Pro-life people have strong common sense. And naturally, we want to focus on that issue because it's very important. But that also helps us to be serious about other life issues. And it's important to help people in general. Myself, as well as the Knights of Columbus, are focused on protecting life um, before birth, but that's not our only concern. We're also concerned on life issues in general. Myself and Father Sean have seen the Knights of Columbus help us in many ways. Many parents with deaf children tell me the same story again and again, that Someone may approach them and say, oh, your child is deaf. That's such a terrible thing. I bet you probably wish you knew that before your child was born. Meaning, they wish they had had an abortion and killed their child. And that's not OK. It's a serious issue. But God has mercy on us all, right? Yes. We'd like to thank our special guest, Father Jeremy St. Martin and Celia Mohiga for joining us today. This is Connie Murphy. Join us next time for Dr. Mildred Faye Jefferson's Vital Concerns. <laughs>